All right, we just submitted our first assignments, which means we can move on to our next assignments. And that means a new unit. And this unit is continuing compositing, but instead of applying it to a landscape, to the setting uh, concept art, we're going to work on creature concepts. This is basically character design, creature work. And we're going to start with a sketch, just like we did for our landscape, except our sketch we're going to draw before we look for references, because our sketch is going to inform what reference we look for. So this is making a blueprint for the creature, and then we're finding the parts for the creature, like Frankenstein's, like Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> would find parts from different people and put them together into a monster. As part of this unit, we have a question of the day. So let's look at that really quick. This question of the day, as we're continuing to work with compositing and other people's pixels, this is the one that is informed by chapter two. And you are required to read chapter two. It's in our course outline in order to inform this question of the day, but also your understanding of what responsibilities and rights does an artist have when using other people's pixels, you know, and compositing with them. Legal boundaries, artistic integrity, the right to communicate a personal vision, etc. I give you some help here. Here are some of the most popular Creative Commons designations. I want you to see if you can understand what these mean, right? So you can have CCO, which is basically CC public domain, or you can have CC, um, this one, what does that mean? And that's one that you can't edit it. It has to be in the same format that it was found. This one has to do with attribution. This one means you can't profit off of it. Just different things. Actually, that's not that you can't edit it. That's this one. I'm not sure what that one is. So that's where the reading helps. And then there's a little video that a, a student recommended I put in. And it's about the history of copyright and Disney's influence on it. So it gives you a, a nice background on copyright law and where it stands right now. And the Disney Corporation has a lot to do with that. And there's even a link to some slides I put together about appropriation. That's a lot of fun because students have a lot of questions about it. So we'll get into this with the discussion, kind of understanding why Shepard Ferry got sued for his Obama Hope poster because he took it from this image he found on Google Images and how you really do need to <laughs> uh, understand copyright law so you don't get stuck in a trap and have it, have it settling out of court for $5 million. Even though he made mo no money on the poster and it was donated to the Democratic National Committee. So, good to understand. But we'll move through that question of the day. It's always good to put your thoughts here, start thinking about it, and read chapter two. And now we start building our own creature from different parts that we select. But we have to now sketch with anatomy in mind. And the whole point is whether you're making it out of rocks or, or, or crabs or rhinoceroses or mushrooms, this is all mushrooms. What you want to do is first understand how the anatomy works. You can see past examples. You can see past playlists. This is all assignment two. So just like before, we can use Pixabay or Google Images to find references. But unlike before, we're not going to start by finding references. We're going to start by sketching. And it's hard to just start with whatever you want. So I want you to pick an inspiration to base your sketch from. And a good option is Pokemon, right? So if I just search for Pokemon, what's nice about them, these are some of the new ones, um, they always are designed with the silhouette in mind. So it means no matter what angle or whatever the creature is, right? Obviously inspired by a seal in this case. If it was just a black cutout, you would still understand that creature's anatomy. Well, I'll just look up just kind of a Pokédex. So we have a lot at once, right? 
that's the same one. So here are some of the early ones. If you just squint and you see these all as silhouettes, they showcase what they look like, you know, what their anatomy is. So I have a, a fast food background. So what kind of creature might contrast with that nicely? Maybe something really spiky and hard edged. Maybe something like this. So I might use this to inspire my sketches. So I'm just going to do a quick screen grab of it. And I like to usually pick more than one. So I'll go back. And I wish these websites weren't always changing and but let's see. Something spiky and interesting like this one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick sketch just in my sketchbook. And I'll show you in photo P so it can be in the video. And I'm going to bring these references in. And it's going to kind of shrink them down. So you're looking at reference, and then you're trying to understand how the anatomy works. And I'm going to do kind of a blending of these two things. Okay, then I'm just going to use my tablet and my stylus, but you can use pencil and paper. And what I'm going to do is add these two together. So this plus this, what does it equal? So the first thing I want to find, I'm going to show you with a different color, is their cranium. So here, this cranium is about that big. Here, this cranium is about that big. It's the thing that contains the skull. And you start by drawing that. All right, next. And this is not going to be a high-resolution drawing. The spine. The spine connects along the back, the cranium with the back. That spine's doing that. That spine's doing that. Which one do I want to go with? I want to go more with this one because it's going to be more interesting for my landscape if I have a creature on all fours. I'm doing one on two legs in the morning class. Now that spine connects with something. What does it connect with? It connects with a pelvis at the base of the spine. And then it can extend through a tail as well. So I need to find that pelvis. And that can sometimes be hidden. So in this creature, that pelvis is wide and at the back like this. So I'm going to put mine kind of up here and then joints at the sides for the legs. But I might use these legs because I can see those more clearly. Because I kind of like those finned feet. So what does that look like? The joint goes out. That's the femur. The fibia and tibia go back. And then the, the tarsals and metatarsals of the foot then we end in the toes. So the legs are going to look like this in my skeletal template. It's going to help me know what to look for. What else do we have along the spine going back from the cranium? We have a rib cage. But what holds the rib cage? It's the collarbone. So it goes between the shoulder joints. So for his shoulders, you can see the shoulders right here and here. So you have a very low collarbone. I like that. So I'm going to try to do that. So there's like no neck at all. Collarbones really up front. Then you have a big rib cage. Huge on this guy. Smaller on this guy. See those rib cages? They go between the collarbones. A big barrel going back. I'm going to make mine pretty big, but not as big as this guy's. All right, so it's kind of the proportions of a buffalo right now in terms of rib cage to pelvis to head. And that actually might be a nice idea. Buffalo? <laughs> All right, next, I just need the arms 
and the legs. Or I got the legs. I just need the arms. So a joint here, joint here, joint here, joint here. This is based on a rhino or a, an elephant. Pretty simple. Two joint arms. Okay, the last thing is if you want a tail or you don't want a tail, it just extends out, right, from the pelvis. And then you need what's called the mandible. So the mandible for this character is a beak. It extends from the, the cranium. For this character, it's this kind of muzzle, this triangular muzzle that extends from the cranium. I think I want to do the triangular muzzle because I'm doing a beak in the other class. So I'm going to add that in. All right, so now I've got this creature. And I'm inspired by these different textures. So what kind of uh, reference am I going to look for? Maybe a buffalo. I think for the legs in the front, definitely a rhinoceros. For the back legs, though, I'm thinking, you know, a duck, duck feet, maybe a platypus. Platypus is like the real world version of this project. And then for the head, I want to know where the head's looking, what direction the head is in. So I'm going to do this in a different color just to show you. These are called your direction lines. I'll zoom in on the head. And you want to see, you want to kind of cut it in half, and then you want to cut across the eyes. So you can see where you want to place the eyes and which way you're looking at the head. So when you look for reference, the head is facing the right way. And I need a mandible that's kind of this shape. And maybe I'll have like a crest on it. You know, kind of like this. Maybe their ears, maybe their antlers, maybe there's something else. So I'll have to think about that. Maybe a rhinoceros beetle. Then maybe this, let's see, something angular could it come from? Yeah. I'm going to think about it. And then I'm going to look up these different things. So I have a buffalo, a beetle, a rhino, a duck, a platypus, and see if I can find reference for these angles. And then I'm going to be mapping them onto this guy by the end. And I'm deciding now I don't want those ears or those... the ridges because I want to see the shoulders. I like that. But I might decide, oh, okay, I want like a, uh, a different kind of head. <laughs> I don't know why I'm blinking right now. But a, a shape that's interesting with something that's more triangular. Okay. That's how we're going to sketch. And then we're going to find that reference and start building it next class. But come with a sketch, please. And then that will do it. So the head is a question now. What kind of reference can I find for it? There's always lizards. There's all kinds of things I could try to find. That will do it.